record now to the cloud and we'll put the live transcript on, enable auto. Okay, so um, members of the Board of Trustees, uh, Committee on Academic Affairs, please respond present when you hear your name. So Trustee uh, Cortez Vasquez. Present. Great. Vice Chairperson Ken Sunshine. Present. Great. Uh, Trustee Clark. Present. Great. Trustee Linares Garcia. Nope, not yet. Okay. Professor Karen Coughlin. Present. Great. Oh, hi, Karen. how are you? There you are. How you doing? Great. Professor Maureen Matareza. Not yet. We'll come back to her. Okay. Uh, Amber Rivera, the student representative. Amber, are you there yet? Okay, we'll wait for you. Um, Nigel Thomas, I see your name. I'm here. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. This new student alternate, Trustee Picant, I see you as well. Oh. I thought I saw you. Hello. Okay. Um, so you have a quorum. Wonderful. We have a quorum. The All, public, right. All right, thank you. This is a public meeting of the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration, and now it's being called to order. On March 7, 2020, Governor Cuomo, oh no, Gail, do you want to read? I can read this, it's fine. Yep. Thank you. On March 7, 2020, Governor Cuomo issued Executive Order 202 declaring a state of emergency in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. On March 13, 2020, Governor Cuomo issued Executive Order 202.1, which included a suspension of the law allowing the attendance of meetings telephonically or other similar service. Article seven of the public officer's law to the extent necessary to, to permit any public body to meet and take such actions authorized by the law without permitting in public in-person access to meetings and authorizing such meetings to be held remotely by conference call or similar service provided that the public has the ability to view or listen to such proceeding and that such meetings are recorded and later transcribed. In accordance with the executive order, this board meeting is being held via video conference with a live stream found at the CUNY Board of Trustees website. We are also testing out a new closed captioning feature, which you will see on the bottom of your screen. A copy of the calendar and agenda is also available online at the CUNY Board of Trustees website. Additional items may be added during the meeting. And as a reminder, please mute your audio so we can ensure that everyone can be heard. I, so I will now um, actually take attendance and a roll call attendance for members of the chancellery. So members of the chancellery, please respond present when you hear your name. Chancellor Felix Matos Rodriguez. Present. Great. General Counsel and Senior Vice Chancellor for Legal Affairs, Derek Davis. Present. Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost, Jose Luis Cruz. Present. Executive Vice Chancellor and Chief Operating Officer, Hector Batista. Present. Senior Vice Chancellor, Glenda Grace. Present. Vice Chancellor Dorian Gloria. Present. President Thomas Sakonegbi. Present. Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs from Brooklyn College, Ann Lopes. I see Present. you there. Sorry. Sorry. Hillary Klein from the General Counsel's Office. Present. And I see that we've also been joined by um, uh, Professor Burke, Trustee Burke, I'm sorry um, that I didn't mention you previously, but he's uh, with us. And um, Professor Maureen Matareza has also joined. And Trustee Pecan, I got you too. Thank you. And, oh, and Myra, there you are. It's Myra and Trustee Linares Garcia. Um, and as well, uh, the new student representative, Amber Rivera. Welcome, Amber. Wonderful. So you're Glad good that to you go. Could. Great. Glad that you could all join us. Thank you, Gail. Uh, given that all board members are particip participating remotely, I will announce the resolutions. 
and we'll ask that for the members to respond only if you would like to abstain or oppose an item. Otherwise, your vote will be recorded as a yes vote. If you're voting no or abstaining, please uh, state your name and your vote. Additionally, if you wish to uh, second an item or have any questions, please state your name first for the record and then um, and you will be acknowledged. Thank you. Um, and it, sometimes remotely is difficult. So let's see if we can do it by a raise a hand or something visible where you can be acknowledged. Thank you. Uh, we'll take up the following items for approval. Action item 1A is the approval of the minutes of October 5th, 2020. I move that the, I move the approval of action item 1A. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, uh, Dr. Clark. Uh, any, any discussion? Hearing none, I'm gonna call for a vote. Um, will you respond only if you would like to abstain and opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? No, we, we don't need okay. to do that, Lorraine. You can do it only. I, I, I know, I keep saying that it's only a yes vote, but I feel compelled to do it. I know, right. I know. Hearing no abstentions or objections, this motion has, this action has been approved. Now I would like to address action item uh, B and the policy calendar. Uh, policy item B uh, is a resolution requesting the approval of the Committee of Faculty, Staff, and Administration Report. Now I call on uh, Chancellor Dorian Grace to provide further background on this item. The CFSA report reflects a total of 86 employee actions, including 32 appointments and reappointments with tenure, 28 fellowship leaves, and 20 acting or interim appointments. I move for the approval of policy item 1B. Um, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Uh, any discussion on this item? Hearing none, we'll vote now. Again, respond. And this is more of a note to myself. Respond if you want to abstain or <laughs> oppose. Hearing no abstentions or opposition, uh, I move the approval of item, policy item B1. Policy item B2 is a resolution requesting to amend uh, certain investment options in the City University of New York optional retirement program and tax deferred annuity plan. I now call on uh, Vice Chancellor Dorian Grace, Dorian, I'm sorry, Grace, Glor uh, Dorian Gloria to uh, provide further background on this item. The Board of Trustees of the City University of New York established an investment policy statement in 2014, establishing, among other things, guidelines for the university's management of the City University of New York Optional Retirement Program and the City University of New York Tax Deferred Annuity Plan. In accordance with the guidelines established under the investment policy statement, and as part of the review process of the array of investment funds within the university plans, the university has been advised by its investment advisor, Kamak Retirement Group, to substitute the existing Templeton Global Bond R6 fund with the age appropriate target date fund in all of the university's plans. Kamak Retirement advised the university that the TIA Stable Value Fund would be a strong addition for the plan's investment lineup to further help mitigate interest rate risk. The University Committee charged with review of CAMAC Retirement's recommendations determined that the recommendations for the substitution of the Templeton Global Bond R6 Fund with the Age Appropriate Target Date Fund and the addition of the TIA Stable Value Fund in all of the University's plans was necessary and in the best interest of the plan's participants. Thank you. Uh, I now uh, move the approval of policy item 
the B2. Do I have a second? I second Amber Rivero. Thank you. Nice to see you, Amber. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Lorraine, yeah, this is uh, Karen Coughlin, uh, faculty representative. Uh, I just want to note as faculty rep that I support this amendment uh, and also would like to note our, the faculty's appreciation for administration's ongoing efforts to safeguard the security of our retirement investments, uh, particularly given the current uncertain financial circumstances. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you, Karen, for those remarks. Any other discussion? The line's missing here, Lorraine. My bad. I know, we will I now vote. It. Sorry. I got, I got it. I got it. <laughs> My bad. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, now I'm going to move this item to a vote. Again, abstentions and oppositions are the only ones to be noted. Hearing no abstentions or opposition, uh, this item has been approved. Thank you. Policy item B3 is a resolution uh, requesting uh, to amend City University of, of uh, oh my gosh, I can't even read. City University of New York Board of Trustees bylaws, Article uh, 6, Section 1, to create the titles of Writer Institute Lecturer at the Graduate Center. I now call on um, Vice Chancellor Dorian Gloria to provide further background on this item. The university does not have existing tax levy titles for employing individuals to work as lecturers at the Writers Institute, a one year intensive non credit certificate program at the Graduate Center. And current university titles do not meet the unique requirements necessary to recruit renowned experts in the publishing field to teach in a part time non-tenure role at the Writers Institute at the Graduate Center. The Writers Institute lecturer will provide non-credit instruction on a non-tenure track part-time basis in their unique area of expertise within the publishing industry. And Writers Institute lecturers shall be industry experts who are experienced professionals with at least 10 years of competency in their particular area of specialization, expertise, industry or practice. Employees in this title may not be assigned teaching assignments outside this appointment. Great, thank you for that. Uh, I move the approval of pol uh, policy item B3. Do I have a second? Maria Linares Garcia, second. Hi, how are you, Trustee Garcia? Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Hearing no abstentions or oppositions, this item has been approved. Uh, policy item B4 is a resolution requesting to amend the governance plan for the CUNY Graduate Center of Public Health and Health Policy. I will now call on uh, Hillary Klein to provide further background on this item. Thank you. The proposed amendments to the, I'm going to call it SPH, the SPH governance plan have been approved by the school's governance body, the faculty student council, and they are recommended by the school's dean. Recognizing the school's considerable growth since it was approved by the university's board of trustees as a standalone professional school, the proposed revised governance plan seeks to preserve flexibility in order to keep pace with SPH's considerable growth while upholding the principles of shared governance. As such, the proposed plan reflects substantive revisions in six major areas. First, membership in the faculty student council would be realigned and expanded to more closely represent the school's constituents. Under the current plan, members are all full-time faculty and six student representatives. Under the revised plan, the membership would also include elected representatives of the non-teaching instructional staff, the HEO series, research associates and research assess assistants and CLTs, adjunct faculty and research faculty, and administrators with underlying faculty titles. Faculty at all times would be allotted at least 51% representation on the council. The number of student representatives would increase from six to seven, 
to include as an ex officio voting member, the president of the Graduate Student Government Association. In light of these changes to the Faculty Student Council's membership, the FSC would be renamed the Governance Council. Second, under the revised governance plan, the Council's duties and powers would be broadened to include review and recommendation regarding the school's budget to ensure alignment of planning, budget, and assessment. The Council would also have responsibility for review and recommendation regarding proposals for centers and institutes that would be affiliated with and housed at the school. Third, membership in the SPS's personnel committees at both the department level and school-wide level would be expanded. The department appointment, promotion, and tenure committees would increase from three to five members. The school-wide appointment, promotion, and tenure committee would increase from seven to 10 members, including the dean or designee as a non-voting member. Sorry, it's so long. <laughs> Fourth, to allow for more flexibility, rather than setting forth the committees of SPH within the governance plan itself, the revised governance plan would permit the council to establish its own committees as it deems necessary to the discharge of its responsibilities within the bylaws of the council. This change would alleviate the need to formulate emergency or ad hoc committees or have decisions made by one person. Fifth, a new section entitled student governance would be added to formally recognize the establishment of the Graduate Student Government Association, a student elected body formed in 2017 to help support student needs and assist in enhancing the overall student experience at the school. Six, the revised governance plan would change the procedures for election of department chairpersons, allowing each department to elect a chairperson with the dean's approval, allowing a second department vote if the dean disapproves the first selection, and finally allowing for dean selection after a vote on a selectee by the department if the second candidate is also unsatisfactory to the dean or for the initiation of a search. Currently, each department proposes two candidates for chairperson to the dean, who either selects one of them or may select a third candidate after consulting with the department. Finally, the current governance plan lacks several important administrative provisions that concern various meeting protocols and procedural issues. These provisions, such as protocols for taking attendance and keeping minutes, are incorporated into the proposed governance plan. Other processes, such as those for recalling a council member, establishing alternates, and filling a vacant council seat have also been addressed. The duties and responsibilities of the dean, modeled on the duties and responsibilities of presidents set forth in the United University's Board of Trustees bylaws, section 11.4, have also been incorporated into the revised plan. The plan also creates senior associate deans to be appointed by the dean who, along with directors of centers and institutes, would serve as members of the dean's cabinet. Uh, I move the approval of policy item B4. Do I have a second? Any discussion? I have a clarifying question. Um, even though I moved this, uh, I have a clarifying question. And the cl clarifying question is on item six, all right? Which is uh, the, the, the department's role in the, in the dean's and the dean's approval process. Is this adding an additional step and more involvement by the department um, than, than, than currently? Because that's how I read it. So I would love that clarified. Um, it's giving the, the for, I'll give you the example. Yeah. If the dean, uh, if the dean rejects someone, it goes right back to the department. How is that for the department to review and um, and then give another candidate for selection? Am I reading that correctly? And if so, how is that distinct from what's going on now? Well, yes, I believe, Trustee, you are reading that. Correctly, what's going on now is the department will propose two candidates. The dean will either pick one or 
pick a third person who was not proposed by the department. This provision would allow the department to elect a chairperson and if the dean approves of that chairperson, that person would serve as chairperson, that would be the end of it. However, if the dean disapproves that person, there would then be a second department vote and a second candidate would be submitted to the dean for approval. The dean also has the uh, discretion to disapprove that second selection. Um, and if that candidate's also unsatisfactory, the dean could select a third person or the dean could initiate a search for a chairperson. And does the third person go back to the department? Uh, no, no, the third person does not go back to the department. The department could, I see. Okay. could vote twice. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I think she froze. It freeze, but you're okay now. Yeah, you're back. She okay. finished. Yep. All right. Okay, so you're gonna move. Right. So you want to move? No, no, it. I know. I know where I'm at. I just wanted to. I, I didn't hear what her last statement was. Oh, Hillary, do you want to repeat that? Sure. Um, I think the last question was whether the department would have any role. Does whether the third, the department have a role in the third candidate? Yes, the answer is no. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, that makes me think of president's search committees. Uh, Chasla Matos, I will uh, give you some thinking on that. Um, not a, not a, not a, this is a pretty solid procedure. Anyway, so now we're gonna call for a vote. Any other discussion? Trustee Piquant has a comment. Yes. Um, so far, I have nothing to say, but I like how the expansion of student involvement within this um, new governance plan is implemented. I think that's very key, especially in the times that we're in, um, that we're expanding it to more students being involved and having a voice, um, especially the School of Public Health, which is a prominent um, system within our university despite the pandemic. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing all about the students and the task force they're gonna be a part of and the work that they're gonna do. Yeah, I'm glad you raised that because it was gonna be one of my other comments and I'm glad you raised it, which was, I, it, I was also happy to, re, to be reminded that we have a student government uh, unit in the graduate school level. So that was, uh, that was also very gratifying. So now, any other comments? <coughs> Hearing none, we're going to call it for a vote. Hearing no abstentions or opposition, this uh, motion has carried. I mean, this uh, item has been approved. Moving now to uh, policy item B5. It's a resolution requesting um, to award Michael Mandel early tenure at uh, Brooklyn College with an application um, with an application of bylaw 6.2, section C2. Now I call on uh, Executive Vice Chancellor Jose Luis Cruz to provide further background on this item. And um, uh, uh, Dr. Cruz, you uh, may you may not have to feel compelled to go through the entire bio. That's your discretion. Thank you very much, Trustee Cortez Vasquez. And I just want to acknowledge that the Provost of Brooklyn College, uh, Ann Lopes, um, is with us in case there are any questions that may come uh, from, from the body regarding these nominations. Um, so to be concise, uh, Dr. Michael Mandel is an Associate Professor in the Department of Computer and Information Science at Brooklyn College. He served in that capacity since fall 2015. He is a distinguished uh, faculty member there in the five years he's been serving. Uh, he's raised more than $1.6 million in NSF, Alfred B. Sloan Foundation and Google Research Grants uh, to support uh, his scholarly uh, work and that of his students and has generated 17 high quality peer reviewed conference papers at internationally renowned conferences. Um, he has also found time to serve on several uh, important committees at Brooklyn College um, and is an internationally recognized expert in his field and produced work at the highest distinction. And hence, um, I am proud to support 
his candidacy for early tenure at Brooklyn College. And I proudly move this for approval. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Great. Any discussion? Yeah. Hearing none, I'm going to call it for a vote. Hearing no abstentions or oppositions, this motion has carried. Congratulations, Dr. Mandel. Uh, policy item B6 is a resolution requesting to award uh, Malcolm uh, Merriweather early tenure at the Brooklyn College Music Conservatory uh, with the, an application of bylaw 6.2C2. Again, I call on Executive Vice Chancellor Cruz to provide further background on this item. Thank you, Trustee Cortez Vasquez. Uh, Professor Mark and Mary Wetter has been a member of the Brooklyn College Music Conservatory faculty since 2016 and is considered a highly prized um, addition to the department by the entire academic uh, community of Brooklyn College. Uh, his professional record exceeds the expectations of faculty being considered for tenure and promotion and includes extensive contributions to choral music, voice conducting, and performance. He is also considered by the classical music community to be an exceptionally rare talent, a celebrated baritone and an accomplished conductor, <laughs> as well as an outstanding and creative teacher. And so uh, to keep it uh, short, because I think uh, not a lot uh, of support is needed for such an outstanding candidate, I just want to highlight that uh, his recent professional work includes performing for Pope Francis at the Vatican, releasing a critically acclaimed recording and conducting several internationally celebrated choirs, both in the United States and abroad. Um, he is among the best of what we have at CUNY to offer, and I proudly support his candidacy for early tenure at the Brooklyn College Music Conservatory. I know I'm always short on words, but I want to, I want you to just mention his role with the, um, with the Haitian, uh, uh, with the, in Haiti, operated by the Andrea Bocelli Foundation. If you could just mention that for some of our committee members. Thank you, uh, prof uh, Dr. Cruz. Thank you. I will actually ask uh, Provost Lopes to say a few words about that because she's more familiar with that particular part of his uh, work. Uh, thank you. Of course, thank you very much for this opportunity. Professor Merriweather conducts um, the Children's Choir, um, Voices of Haiti. He is the artistic director of a 60-member Children's Choir in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. We are proud of that uh, accomplishment of his. So are we. Um, I move this item for approval, policy item uh, B6 for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? We'll now call it for a vote. Hearing no abstentions or opposition, this vote, uh, this policy item has been approved. And I want to acknowledge Provost, uh, Executive Vice Provost, or Vice Chancellor Provost, tiene mucho titulo, Jose Luis Cruz, because he always presents us with excellent, excellent uh, candidates, but also with the background necessary so that our, our job is easier for early tenure. So I want to acknowledge that, uh, Dr. Cruz. Thank you. Um, hearing no other items for the policy can, uh, calendar, I move to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second for that? Second. <laughs> Great. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you.